Hey guys, my name is Dimitri. Uh, I love building Subarus, as I'm sure all of you do. Um, I'm by no means any form of an expert, uh, but uh, I guess over the last few years I've become pretty good at fabricating and tuning my car. And um, you know, one of the things I like is I like to strive to learn as much as possible about the cars and to understand what it's doing, not just uh, not just on uh, what parts I put on and what they do kind of deal, but uh, the way the car really, really works underneath all of that in terms of the what the computer is doing, what the sensors are doing, why the sensors are there. Um, and so take wh what I say with a grain of salt, uh, but uh, once again, I've put a lot of time and effort in learning this. So here's the topic at hand. A uh, question was asked by my friend Patrick on the Rain City Subies group, uh, which is a club I belong to, and the question goes like this. I am new with AP, which is access port by Cobb, it is a tuning interface for a Subaru. Uh, can someone please explain what I should be worried about and what to just brush off when monitoring find knock learn feedback knock and damn and that's a very great question that definitely deserves to have some answers so first of all this is all talking about knock uh, ie engine detonation uh, pinging pre detonation whatever you want to call it and um, First of all, that's not the same thing as what a lot of us have experienced when our car starts for oil and then, you know, we have a bearing failure in one of our rods and then we hear a clicking, ticking, knocking sound coming from the engine bay. This is not the knock we're talking about. We're not talking about mechanical knock. Um, we're talking about what happens when the fuel mixture ignites when it's not supposed to, in a nutshell. So let me give you... Let me give you a little picture here. All right, so this is uh, just a basic four-stroke engine and the four different um, strokes that it performs, uh, which is why it's called a four-stroke. So as the piston goes down, it sucks the air in in the first picture here. And then as the piston goes up with the air-fuel mixture inside of it, uh, it gets squished. And then you have the spark event uh, which happens and then you have combustion so you have a controlled burn of all the gases that are in the combustion chamber and then you have the exhaust stroke when all those gases are basically pushed out of the engine by the piston through the exhaust valve uh, I'm sure hopefully a lot of you understand this so I don't need to explain it any further but knock is what happens when the mixture ignites before the spark happens or anytime the spark uh, doesn't go off and the mixture still ignites and one of the big issues in turbocharged engines is that this happens when uh, the compression stroke is happening. So you have your piston, so your whole engine is rotating, there's four moving pistons. Uh, some of them are going up, some of them are going down, and the mixture can ignite while the piston is moving up in the compression stroke. And so imagine this, you have the engine spinning, uh, driving your car, driving your wheels, uh, and one of the pistons is going up and as it's trying to squish the air fuel mixture it combusts and so I'm sure you can imagine uh, how much force that has so you have an explosion which basically tries to force that very piston and rod back into the crank and resist the rest of this whole process which is a very violent event and um, it's not good um, I heard one said that any single knock event, if it happens at the right time, under the right circumstances, can take out your engine. And I think that's true. Uh, I like to live by that. Um, sure, our engines can survive a couple of those knock events, especially if we have a built engine. Anyway, that's not the point for today. Uh, I've actually experienced uh, engine knock due to mechanical stuff. Uh, when my car leaned out, when I happened to be going over a mountain pass, and the result was this complete engine failure um, you can see in the middle of the picture you can see inside the engine block a torn rod um, what I believe happened is I uh, I had a knock event or actually a series of knock events which blew my ring lines which created enough friction to tear the rod and then the rod just punched holes in the block complete engine loss full rebuilt and now I have a built block anyway cool story bro <laughs> So just very, very quickly, and I'm not going to go too far into this, why does knock happen in the first place? Uh, so it could be a tuning issue, so there's too much timing, that's be or uh, the timing's being advanced too much, uh, which creates 
Higher cylinder pressures, uh, it creates higher temperatures inside the cylinder. Um, and as a result, uh, it's just a hot environment. The fuel starts to ignite uh, prematurely. Uh, another reason is uh, our oil system, our uh, PCV system, which vents uh, pressure from our oil system essentially back into the intake, uh, allows oil to enter the intake and enter the combustion chamber. Um, and so sometimes you can have oil, like in this case, you can see a little bit of oil build up on the walls and stuff. Um, although a lot of that's probably from the engine blowing up. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, that, that oil can uh, start to sort of smolder uh, as little ambers uh, if it's not cleared away by the combustion process. And so once again, you can have a smolder and uh, the mixture just has the right environment to combust. You can also be running lean, which uh, also when there's not enough fuel, uh, you're uh, creating much more higher temperatures within the cylinder. And so all of those things can lead to just fuel uh, burning in an uncontrolled way when it's not supposed to. That's pretty much all it is. So how does Subaru deal with knock? There are three types of, uh, there are three pieces, let's say, to the Subaru knock control strategy. And uh, this is where it's gonna get interesting. Uh, as Patrick asked, there's uh, feedback knock, there's fine learning knock, and there's dam, which is a long-term correction. Um, and if you have ROM Raider or you have a tactrix cable like me, uh, it's called IAM, but it stands for the same thing. Anyway, so how does this all work? I mean, it's pretty simple. Subaru basically has a knock sensor, which is just a microphone that is attached to the block. Uh, it's smarter than that, as in it can filter out a lot of the noise that happens in the engine um, and pick up specific frequencies that are associated with knock. As you're accelerating under power, it can happen under different RPMs. It can happen under different uh, engine loads. And uh, so that's important for a couple of these things. Uh, but let's start out with the easy one, which is feedback knock. So basically the way feedback knock works is it's a in the moment, momentary timing retardation <laughs> uh, uh, after a knock event occurs. So say you're accelerating, uh, you know, you're, you have some blow by going into your intake, you have a droplet of oil hit your cylinder wall. Uh, and it carbonizes and then it's smoldering as an amber and then as you're accelerating you experience you know one little knock event or two knock events whatever uh, which are small in nature whatever uh, your knock sensor picks that up and then it pulls depending on how severe it is or how many happen in a sequence um, some timing now by pulling timing we're decreasing uh, our power we're decreasing our temperatures um, and we're keeping the engine safe so Basically, computer goes, oh crap, we're knocking, uh, let's, let's protect ourselves. And all of these knock events have a, a timeout. And so feedback knock, when it happens, uh, knock event happens, engine pulls some timing, and literally within like a second or two, uh, maybe even less, uh, your timing goes back to normal. So it's just a response in the moment to an event. So one of the issues with this, though, is you have a microphone that's attached to an engine which you know can have rattles or you can have bad exhaust brackets or bad suspension components and so sometimes the noise that it picks up isn't real knock and so you have to keep that in mind uh, where you know especially in feedback knock when you're just driving around and it randomly gets weird numbers uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you're knocking like uh, right now I have uh, uh, a caliper on one of my wheels uh, that's worn down and so it rattles when I go over bumps and so experiencing knock at 2000 rpm uh, at you know part throttle um, it's not really uh, a thing that happens and so I know I know it happens exactly when I hear the rattles and I'll get crazy numbers so I don't worry about that because I know it's not real knock um, so but however when you start getting into fine learning knock and especially IAM and DAM, which I'll talk about later, it's a repeated knock event that happens. Uh, and random knock, so random noises that the microphone picks up, 
uh, are not necessarily false knock, uh, and there's a good chance it's actually real knock that happens. And so I take personally uh, fine learning knock and IAM much more seriously than I take feedback knock. All right, let's move on to fine knock, fine learning knock. Uh, what does that mean? Fine learning knock uh, pulls timing when repeated knock events occur in the same part of the RPM and load it range. I realize that's a mouthful, but here's how it works. So say you're accelerating, uh, your turbo starts spooling up at three and a half thousand RPM, uh, your engine knocks, you do it again, your engine knocks in the same spot. So let's say f only 100% full throttle under heavy engine load, uh, as the turbo spools up, you're experiencing a knock event. Um, it is a repeated knock event. And so your ECU sees that and it pulls timing, just like in the feedback knock event. However, the one difference is the timeout period for that place is not momentarily where it's a second or two, it's a long period of time and it's uh, defined in the ECU map. So what that means is your ECU will pull, say, two degrees of timing, uh, it doesn't do that, but let's say two degrees of timing, and then if the knock event happens within a specific timeout, say 10 minutes, one hour, whatever, uh, then it will continue keeping that there. If it gets worse, if it's happening faster, it will pull more timing in that cell. Uh, and so here's, uh, if you look on the screen right now, you can see at the lower section over here where it says engine load, uh, fine learning knock correction. This is what actually inside your ECU and it's stored. So say you're accelerating, so you go, uh, if you watch my cursor, you go pedal to the metal into the, let's, let's go mid-range for this case. Mid-range, we're accelerating, you know, from a dead still turbo spooling, we reach target boost, we're at 4,000 or 4,800 to 5,600 RPM. And over here, we've experienced knock before, so the ECU will pull timing. As we go to above 5,600 5, RPM, it's pulling almost four degrees of timing. So we know that in this area, the engine is knocking. Uh, and the ECU has protected itself, as in it pulled timing, so anytime it reaches that condition within a specific amount of time, it will pull that timing. Now, what's cool about it is if this is a temporary thing, say you have bad gas, or say you have uh, whatever, uh, excessive blow by, or, you know, you're at an altitude where your fuel mixture isn't quite right. Um, this will happen for a period of time, but when the conditions are back to normal, the engine will, uh, remove that, remove timing and, uh, go back to zero. So think about it as sort of a slightly longer term protection mechanism, um, to feedback knock. When is it bad to have fine learning? Well, once again, fine learning indicates that you have a repeated knock event. Now, sure, if you drive your car really hard all of a sudden um, at high altitude uh, and you get a few places in the map uh, where you're experiencing knock events and your engine has full timing for a period of time, uh, whatever, say one or two degrees, and then uh, sometime later that goes back to zero. It's not a big deal. Uh, if you're driving along and you're experiencing numbers that don't go away or different numbers come back at different times, uh, especially if you start getting into higher degree numbers, so say your ECU is pulling minus 1.4, but then it's pulling three point whatever, you know, four degrees of timing, uh, then something's happening, especially if it's happening in the same part of your RPM range, um, then that needs to be addressed by your tuner. Um, I'll go back to what I originally said, um, which is I heard once that a single knock event can take out the engine. And, um, you know, if it means protecting my engine, then some of those things are good cause for concern. Um, which brings me to the last part, which is uh, DAM, or in this case, IIM, which means the same thing. Um, it is uh, an overall timing uh, multiplier for the whole system. So the way this works is if your car is knocking in multiple places and it's knocking above a certain point, uh, 
So say you have a couple of cells that read, say, minus four degrees of timing. So your car is compensating for a lot of knock. Uh, this number, DAM or IAM, will go down. And so what that means is all timing tables uh, 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 and other, other compensations within the ECU to protect your engine. So say you put, say you're tuned for uh, 93 octane gas, and then you put in 87 octane gas, um, your, I, your dam will drop because you're going to start knocking. Uh, your engine will protect itself, it will, it will cut down on power, it will um, protect itself. So <laughs> what the hell does that mean? Uh, well, you can think about it this way. If you didn't put 87 uh, octane gas in there and your car starts knocking that hard, there's something seriously wrong mechanically. Whether it be dirty fuel injector where you're running lean, uh, bad mass airflow sensor where you're not reading the correct air mixture, uh, something mechanical changed, do you have a vacuum leak, boost leak, uh, any, any number of those things. When you have a serious mechanical issue, you will knock significantly more and your car will protect itself. So it's generally said that if your dam or IAM drops at all, um, then there's something seriously wrong with your car and it needs to be addressed. Um, also, once you get tuned to run on a specific grade of gasoline, uh, it's generally not at all a good idea to put a different grade of gasoline because from the factory, the Subaru is, you know, a pretty safe ECU. It protects itself. Uh, I've had to put in lower grade gasoline before and uh, drive it like that, and the car is fine. Uh, this is before I did any serious modification to this car. So, however, when you start increasing boost and putting on bigger turbos or, you know, bigger performance parts or in any way, shape or form increasing that stuff, especially if you get a professional tune, you're tuned to run a specific fuel in your engine. And so a lot of these mechanisms aren't going to be as dialed in and aren't going to protect you um, in case knock happens. So I realized that was a, a mouthful and a lot of talking and a lot of information. So I hope at least some of that made sense. And uh, my diagrams, which I borrowed from the internet, weren't too boring. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, Patrick. I hope that answers your question or anybody else who's asking the same question. And uh, please, if you have any input, uh, if you're a tuner or if you're more experienced than I am, please do put that stuff in the, dis or in the comment section. And uh, maybe I'll address that in another video later. So thanks for watching. Patrick, thanks for asking. Uh, drive safe and uh, keep your Subi safe.